praise to the Most High. So tonight's topic is the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. Okay. So tonight we're going to go over what the Day of Atonement is about. Okay. Uh, take notes. All right. Okay. Let's open up with the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Let's start there. John 8, verse 32. Read that. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is the Messiah speaking. He's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? He says, we shall know the truth, and the truth will set us free, will make us free. Because why? We are in captivity. We are in slavery right now. The Lord is going to give us the truth of this Bible to remember who we are, that we may be able to get delivered from the hands of our enemy. Okay, read verse 36. Come on. Verse 36, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If the Son of God will make us free, we are going to be free indeed. Why? Because the Spirit of Christ will be upon us. The Spirit of Christ will teach us to keep the commandment. And when we keep the commandment, we stand the chance at deliverance. Okay? Give me that in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Read that. The book of Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Then he answered Wait. and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of, of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You see that thing? So we are not going to get delivered by our own power. We're not going to get delivered by our own might, but by the spirit of the Lord we will be delivered from the hands of our enemies. Wherever we get it, you understand? So get that in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Read that. 2 book of Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that Go spirit. Ahead. And where that spirit of the Lord is, mm -hmm. there is liberty. Read that again. Verse 17. 2 book of Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. Mm -hmm. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You see that? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's why it says, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. So the only way we are going to get de delivered, we are going to be free from the lands of our enemies, is by the Spirit of Christ. Christ is the only way for us to come out of this mess that we're in. Because we got ourselves into this mess. You understand? So the Lord sent Christ, his Son, to die for us, that we may get a chance at repentance. And today, it is the glorious day of the Lord. Okay? Where the most High God is wiping the slate clean. You understand? Understand, there's going to be war. Because now Satan is coming in full swing. Understand that thing. Okay? So now, watch this. Let's go to Leviticus. Okay? Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23 verse 1. Let's read that. Let's go into the day of atonement. All right? Read that. The book of Leviticus. Chapter 23, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. You see that? It says, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which the day of atonement is one of them. What are we feasting on? The word of the Most High God. Okay? It says, We must come together as a nation. A holy convocation. It is a composite. We must come together. That's why we're coming together this day. Because it is written in the Holy Spirit. Jump down to verse 26 now. Verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also, on the tenth day mm -hmm. of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. You see that? It says, on the tenth day of this seventh month. The seventh month of the year is September. That's where we are now. September is the seventh month of the year. On the tenth day of this seventh month, they shall be the day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you. So Moses keep repeating himself over and over, because we as the nation of Israel, we slow. Okay? So it says, what? And he shall afflict your soul and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Let's understand what it means to afflict our souls. 
Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 58, verse 3. What does it mean to afflict your soul? On the tenth day, which is the ninth day at even, we are commanded to afflict our soul. Read that. Isaiah 58, verse 3. The book of Isaiah chapter 58, verse 3. Wherefore have we mm. fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted Read. our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Mm -hmm. Behold, you in see the that? day of your fast. So to fast means, hold on, wait. To fast means to afflict your soul. To fast means to afflict your soul. So that's what we need in here. That's what Isaiah is giving us the clarity to what that means. Go back to Lucas 23 to 27 again. Fasting means to afflict your soul. That's what we're doing this day. We are afflicting our souls. Read. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 27. Also, on the tenth day mm -hmm. of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So the offering that was made by fire unto the Lord is a sacrifice that Christ made. Okay, get that in Romans chapter 5, verse 11. Watch this. He says, He shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Because we don't do that anymore because we're no longer under the law of animal sacrifice. Okay, watch this. Read that, Romans 5, verse 11. Start at verse 6. We're going to read down. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet mm -hmm. without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. The ungodly is talking about the 12 child of Israel because we broke all, God of God, all of God's commandments. So he says, when we were yet without strength, because right now we're still without strength. We're still in the neck of our, we still, guess what? We're still in captivity. So from the time of Egypt, guess what? We got our kingdom for eight years. And then after that, we've been going from slavery after slavery unto this very day. We're still in captivity. You understand? Go ahead. For scarcely for righteous men, for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure mm -hmm. for a good man, some would even dare to die. You see that? So a righteous, one righteous man that died for us, that's, who, that's Christ. He died for the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. But God commanded his love towards us. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see that? While we were yet sinners, while we were still breaking God's commandments, guess what? Christ died for us. That is the message right there. So that's what we are reading here. What we're reading here in Romans 5 is what we just read. The Apostle Paul is breaking it down for us. Go ahead. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We shall be saved from wrath through him because by right, we're all supposed to be put to death. You understand? We're all supposed to be dead. So, but because the Lord sent his son Christ to die for us, guess what? Now we are saved from the wrath of God through Christ dying for us. Go ahead. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, being reconciled, mm -hmm. we shall be saved by his life. You see that? It says, when we were enemies, because we became God's enemies. Okay, get that in lamentations real quick. We became God's enemies. Okay? It says, when we were enemies, because we were God's enemies, right now, because of what Christ did, now we're getting a chance to get back to the Lord. Okay, we're getting into the good places of the Most High God. Get that in Lamentations 2 verse 1. Then we're going to jump. Watch this. The book of Lamentations chapter 2 verse 1. How had Read. the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger mm -hmm. and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel and remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. You see that? The Lord, he says, he comes down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel. We went into slavery. We went into captivity, colonization, forced migration, apartheid, chapel, so You understand? You name them. They happened to us. Jump down to verse 4. Go ahead. Verse 4. He bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with mm -hmm. his right hand as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like mm. fire. You see what? You see what the Lord did? That's what the Lord did to us. Okay? He says he bent his bow like an enemy. Meaning, we became enemies to God. He was at war with us. 
he used the enemy to punish us. Go ahead. The Lord was an enemy. Excuse me, sir. The Lord was what? The Lord was as an enemy. The Lord was as an enemy. We became enemies of God. Okay, come on. He had swallowed up Israel. He had swallowed up all the palaces. He had destroyed his strongholds and had increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. Mourning and lamentations. Jeremiah 14, verse 2. What says? He increased in Judah. You understand? Mourning and lamentation. Jeremiah 14, verse 2. What says? The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Judah right. mourning. And the gates they are mm -hmm. They are bled unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. It's gone up. Okay, read that again for me. Verse two. The book of Jeremiah chapter fourteen, verse two. Judah mm -hmm. mourning, and the gates they are of language. They are bled unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. You see that Judah mourning, and the gates they are of language. They are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. What? So the Lord was jigging us up. He used the Babylonians against us. Before that, he used the Assyrians against us. Shalmaneser, Sennacherib, Tiklas, Peleza. He used all the Syrian kings to jig Israel up. You understand? So now, go back to Romans chapter 5 now. Again, verse 10, come on. The book of Romans chapter 5 is 10. For if, Wait. when we were enemies, he will reconcile to God by the death of his son. Much mm -hmm. more, by reco being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. We shall be saved by his life. So we became God's enemies. We became God's enemies from that time until these last days because we still went into captivity even after Christ died. Because the things that were written in the book of Deuteronomy, they had to be fulfilled. You understand? Go ahead. And not only so. But we also in God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. By whom we have now received the atonement. The atonement years don't talk about the, the day of atonement. The atonement years making reference to the sacrifice. We have now received the sacrifice. That's the atonement. Okay? Get that, get that in Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 8 through 10. Okay? Let's get some more on that. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 8. <laughs> Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering, and when offering, and offering for sin, thou would not. Wait. Neither had pleasure the in, which are offered by the Lord. So you see that part right there? Is a sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings, and offerings for sin, thou would not. Neither has had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Which law? The law we just read in the same verse. Sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings. So that's the offering made by fire unto the Lord. Go back to Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, verse 27 again. The book of Leviticus 23, verse 27. Wait. Also in the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and it shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So the offering that was made by that is made by fire unto the Lord. We don't do that anymore. Why? Because Christ died. He became the offering made by fire unto the Lord. You understand? Go ahead. And he shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement. To make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. He shall do no work in that same day because it's the Sabbath. He shall don't do work in that same day for it is the day of atonement. To make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Okay, come on. For, whoso, for whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Okay, I need you to just relax. Okay, read that verse again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 29. Eight. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. You see that? So he said, if we're not afflicted on this day, we will not fast on this day, the Lord says, you will, you will be cut off from Israel. Okay, 
Meaning what? Put to death. Go ahead. Read. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. What is it? Ye shall do no manner of work. He is repeating what he just read in verse 28. He shall do no manner of work. Why? Because it is a Sabbath. Okay? It's a day of rest on this day. So guess what? We are here Okay? Guess what you need to do? Get that in Philippians real quick. Watch this. Philippians chapter 2. Yeah. Philippians chapter 2 and verse, start verse. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah. Read verse 12. Philippians 2, verse 12. Read that. Yes, sir. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. You see that? Read. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You see that? It says, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Meaning what? Everybody's not working the same jobs and all that, so you have to make arrangements with your job, you understand, for this day. If you have not, read that again, verse 12. The book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The thing we cannot do is this. Get that in... Um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Watch this. We cannot abuse the grace of our Lord and Savior that he gave unto us. Okay, watch this. This is the warning that the Apostle Paul gave unto us. Read what you got. The book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Mm -hmm. For, brethren, ye have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, mm -hmm. but by love, serving one another. But serve one another. He says, we must not abuse the grace that he gave unto us. So don't abuse that grace. We must use it. We must use our grace period effectively because nobody knows. We don't know when your grace is running out. Nobody knows that. You understand? Everybody has been given a measure of grace unto them. Okay? Understand that thing. So go back. Leviticus 23, verse 27, once again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 27. Right? Also in the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Go ahead. Jump down to verse, verse 31, because that's where we were. Read verse 31. Verse 31. Ye mm. shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. So in all our dwellings, wherever we are scattered in these last days, in the lens of our captivity, we must still observe this day. We must rehearse our righteous, the righteous acts of the Lord to show our faith. Read. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest. Mm -hmm. And ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. You see that? So now, you see how we count? So it says what? Read that again, verse 32. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 32. Mm -hmm. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and it shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall you celebrate your Sabbath. You see that? You shall afflict your souls in the ninth day at, of the month at even, meaning at sundown. When the sun goes down in your area, wherever you are, that's when you start the fast, okay? So even unto even, even nothing goes into your mouth. You don't taste, you don't eat, you cannot even brush your teeth during that time. You prepare. You do it before the sun goes down so that when the sun is down, you start the fast. That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. Okay? There's no such thing as a fruit fast. There's no such thing as a water and berry fast. There's no such thing. A fast, nothing goes into your mouth. Okay? Get that in First Ezra 9. First Ezra, chapter 9 and 1. First book of Ezra. Chapter 9, verse 1. Okay. Then Ezra, rising from the court of the temple, went to the chamber of, jo of Jonan, the son of Eliasin. Go ahead. And remained there, and did eat no meat, nor drink water, mourning for the great iniquities of the multitude. You see that? Mourning for the great iniquities of the multitude. 
So he did not eat no meat, nor drink water, because he was mourning for the great iniquities of the what? Of the multitude, meaning the Israelites. He was fasting. So nothing went into his mouth. That's what we're reading in. Okay, Jonah 3 verse 5. Jonah chapter 3 verse 5. The book of Jonah chapter 3 verse 5. Okay. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast. He did what? And, and proclaimed a fast. Proclaimed a fast. Then proclaimed a fast. Come on. And put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Go ahead. The word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Meaning what? In Belep. You know, Belep. So Belep is like a sack. So it's very itchy. So we used to wear that during a fast to show, our, to show ourselves to the Lord that we're willing to go through that, you understand, to sacrifice ourselves to show the Lord that the why? we humbling ourselves. That's what we used to do. You understand? Go ahead. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published to Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Mm. Let them not feed nor drink water. You see that? It says, let them must not taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. So nothing goes into your mouth. 24 hours, nothing goes into your mouth. Our job is to do what? Is to pray, ask, the, ask for forgiveness from the Most High God, to forgive us of all our sins, the evils that we've done this year. Understand that thing, okay? Now, let's go to the New Testament because oh, guess what? During the time of the apostles, they observed the Day of Atonement. Okay, watch this. Acts chapter 27, verse 9. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 27, verse 9. Okay. Now, when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was no. now already passed, Paul admonished them. What is that? Because the what? Because the fast. Because the fast. This is the. This is letting you know. You see, it says the fast. It's not a regular fast. This is the day of atonement. You understand? That's why he's, he's telling you. It says the fast. He's telling you it's a particular type of fast which is composed a special type of fast for all Israel, okay? We needed to observe this thing because during the time of Moses, when we had the mobile tabernacle under Moses' congregation, guess what? The priest, once every year, they'll go into the holies of all, Aaron, you understand, the high priest, and they will wear the what? The ephod representing all 12 tribes of Israel to what? To atone for their sins. Give me Hebrews 10 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Go ahead. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, mm. and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers there unto perfect. You see that? The comers there unto perfect, meaning what? Because every year, once a year, we would go, one, we would go to Jerusalem, you understand, three times a year. The Israelites, we were required to go to Jerusalem. You understand? And guess what? There was a day where we would go there once every year on the Day of Atonement so that the Lord can forgive us of all our sins. That's why it says you could not make the commas there unto perfect because year by year, we would go to Jerusalem for this day. Go ahead. For then would they not have ceased to be offered mm. because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. You see that? Because the worshippers once purged, we should not have had no more conscience of sin. But we did. We had conscience of sin. We're still sinning again over and over. You understand? Bringing the same sacrifices over and over. But it could not be as perfect. Right? But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. You see that? There is a remembrance again, made of sins every year. So whenever we would go to Jerusalem on the Day of Atonement, you understand, it would be a reminder that we are in the midst of sin. Because us bringing the sacrifices and all that, it was a reminder that listen, we, this did not make you perfect because you sinned again. Now you're back, bringing animals and all that to sacrifice for your what? Your sins to be atoned. Okay? 
But guess what? Christ, he, he assisted us with that. You understand? That's why we praise the Lord for this thing. In Hebrews 9 now. Hebrews 9 and 1. Go to the chapter before Hebrews, it. Hebrews 9 and 1. Wait. Then verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service mm -hmm. and a worldly sanction. You see that? And a worldly sanction because we have the mobile tabernacle that we from place to place, okay, in the wilderness, okay, where we have a pillar of fire by a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day, right? So well, there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the statue, and after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. So now the apostle Paul is describing. How the tabernacle was back then. So he's, he's, he's taking us back to the history. He says, For there was what? There was a tabernacle made the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe tray, which is called the sanctuary. So guess what? This was the inner court, okay? Because you had the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of all. That's how it was set up. Right? The which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold. Wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. So read Hebrews 9 verse 3 again. The book of Hebrews of the 9 verse 3. And after the mm -hmm. second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. After the second veil, you get the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. That's where the ark of the covenant was, where there are two cherubims on either side. You understand? And the mercy seat in the middle. Go ahead, verse 4. Read. Which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant mm -hmm. overlaid round about with gold, wherein was Read. the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that were, that budded, and the tables of the covenant. Read. Uh huh, come on. And over it the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. Okay, because we're no longer under the old covenant no more. Go ahead. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. You see that thing? Is that when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle. That's the, uh, that's the inner court, okay? Accomplishing the service of God. Go ahead. But into the second, when the high priest alone, once every year. Stop right there. So it says, but into the second, when the high priest alone, once every year. That's the same thing we just read in Hebrews 10, verse 3. Read Hebrews 10, verse 3 again. Well, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 3. But in those uh -huh. sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Because the remembrance was that when the people, when we, we would come go to Jerusalem, Guess what would happen? The priest, the high priest, the sons of Aaron, if, if, the, if the high priest, let me just put it like this. The high priest will go in there, they will get what? They will be the altar of trials of Israel to atone for their sins. And it was not without blood. Understand that. So go back to Hebrews 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 7 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 is 7. Right? But into the second went the high priest alone once every year. Mm hmm. Not without blood. You see that? Not without blood. Because sacrifices had to be made. Because we were under the law of animal sacrifice. Go ahead. Which he offered for himself and for the errors. Mm -hmm. of the you see that? Because God, guess what? He also sinned. So he had to offer for himself as well. You follow? Yes, sir. Okay, hold that. Give me Leviticus chapter 9. That's why he says, he, the Lord says he offered for himself. Okay, Hebrews 9, I mean Leviticus 9, verse 7. Watch this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 9, verse 7. And Moses mm. said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar and offer thy sin offering and thy burnt mm. offering and make an atonement for thyself and Stop for right the there. people. You see that? And make an atonement. Hold on. Make an atonement for yourself, Aaron. Come on. And for thy people. Mm -hmm. And offer the offering of the people 
and make an atonement for them as the Lord commanded. You see that? So not only did he make an atonement for, for the people, but he had to make an atonement for himself as well. Okay, so go back. Hebrews 9, verse 7, once again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 7. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without the blood which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Read verse 7 again, please. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 7. Read. But unto the second went the high priest alone once every year, not mm -hmm. without the blood which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So he offered for himself and the errand for the errors of the people. Because why? We are all under sin. We've broken the commandments of the Most High. So that's why every year the high priest will go into the holies of all, wearing the ephod to represent all 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Verse 8. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. You see that part right there, this right here is talk about Christ now. It's talk about that Christ, the only way that the what? Read that part again, verse, verse 8. The book of Hebrews of the name is 8. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. Mm -hmm. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. While as yet the first tabernacle was yet standing. What is this going into? Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Galatians 3. I'm going to show you another way the Apostle Paul, how he explains this. Okay. Galatians chapter 3. Read verse 23. We're going to read down. Watch this. The book of Galatians chapter 3 is 23. Mm -hmm. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up into the faith which should afterwards be revealed. You see that? It says, but before faith came, we were kept under the law. The Israelites were kept under the law of animal sacrifice, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. We were shut up unto the faith. Why? All that, go back to where he was at. Hebrews chapter 9. Okay. Hebrews 9 verse 8 again. I'm going to show you the similarities what the Apostle Paul is saying. We're shut up unto the faith we should afterwards be revealed. Okay, read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 8. The Holy mm -hmm. Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Because we're still shut up unto the faith. We should afterwards be revealed when Christ died. That's what he's talking about here. Okay, go ahead. Which was a figure for the time then present, in which mm -hmm. were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect, as pertaining to the conscience. Because it could not make us perfect because our conscience was still defiled. You understand? We would bring sacrifices over and over, you understand? Once every year, the priest will go into the holies of all. But guess what? He didn't make us perfect because our conscience was defiled. Okay? It was going to take Christ to be able to deal when it as pertains to the conscience. Go ahead. Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings mm -hmm. and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. You see that? Until the time of reformation. Because remember, verse 8 says, while as, as, well as the first tabernacle was yet standing, shut up unto the faith, we should afterwards be revealed. He's saying the same thing. Go ahead. The time of reformation is the time of Christ. Read. But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, mm -hmm. by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Because that not of the building, meaning not of the building that was standing back then. Okay, he wasn't talking about that, but of his body. Okay, read. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption mm -hmm. for us. 
Now I want you to read verse 12 again, because verse 12 is telling you that there's a reformation of the church now. You understand? Now we're moving from the old covenant to the new covenant. Read verse, I want you to read verse 6. Watch this. No, read verse 7, then we're going to read verse 12. Read 7 and 12 together. I'm going to show you the differences of the old and the new, what the priest used to do. Read verse 7, Hebrews 9 and verse 7. Jump up to verse 7 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 7. But into the second went mm -hmm. the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he you offered right himself. There. One, hold on. One, it says once, once every year. Once every year. So every year the high priest has to do this. Every year. You follow? Yes, sir. Okay, read verse 7 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 7. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself mm. and for the errors of the people. Now jump down to verse 12. What, what now the, the, the high priest now is being, the priesthood is being changed. What is Read verse 12. Verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. You see what, when Christ came, in, came into the scene, it says what? Neither by the blood of goats and of calves. Remember, when the high priest went into the holies of all, he says it was not without blood. What was the blood? The blood of goats and of calves. When Christ did it, it wasn't the blood of goats and of calves. It was his own blood. He entered in once into the holy place. Having what? Having obtained eternal redemption for us. He only did it once. Now the priesthood is being changed. All that he will seek the trend. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 20. Go ahead. Whither the forerunner is for us entered. Even mm -hmm. Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So you see, Christ is the high priest forever. The, the son of Levi. The sons of Aaron, they were not the priests forever. Christ is. So they were holding that office temporarily until the Son of God will show up on the scene. You understand? That's why it says, we are the foreigner, is for us. Entered. Entered where? Entered into the holy place only once. You understand? Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14, number 12. The book of Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12. Really? For the priesthood being changed. There is made a necessity, a change also of the law. You see that the priesthood was changed. It went from Levi to Judah. Okay. Judah was always the law giver. Okay, go back. Hebrews 9 now. Read verse 12 now. We're going to read down. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. Neither mm -hmm. by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Jump down to verse 14. You know what? Keep verse, reading. Verse 13. Verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. You see that sprinkling the unclean. Who were the unclean? That's us. The 12 tribes of Israel, we were the unclean. That's why when we read in Romans 5 and 6, it says what? He died for the ungod, the unclean. That's talk about us. Go ahead. For how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God? Purge your Stop conscience. Right there. I want you to, hold on. Wait, wait. I need you men and women to pay attention here. It says what? Read that again, verse 14. What's this? The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much mm -hmm. more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God? He offered himself without thought to God. What's the difference here? Hold this. Go back to Leviticus 9, verse 7. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 7. I'm going to show you the differences here. He offered what? He offered himself without thought to God. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 9, verse 7 again. Read that again. The book of Leviticus chapter 9, verse 7. And Come Moses on. said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar. And offer thy sin offering, and thy burnt offering, and make an, an atonement for thyself, 
and for the people. Stop right there. And make an atonement for thy what? And make an atonement for thyself and for the people. And make an atonement. No, make an atonement for thyself. For thyself. Christ didn't do that. Christ didn't offer an atonement for himself. He offered an atonement for the people. That's why it says what? Go back to Hebrews 9. Okay, Hebrews chapter 9. The book of Hebrews 14 again. 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God? You see that? He offered himself without spot to God. But the high priest, when they did it, the sons of Levi, the sons of Aaron, guess what? They had to offer, they had to make an atonement for themselves and for the errors of the people. Christ didn't do that. He, oh, he offered himself to the people because he was that offering, he was that sacrificial lamb that was without spot. The high priest was what? They were, way, they were with spot. They had sinned. That's why they had to what? They had to make an atonement for themselves and then for the people. Okay? Go ahead. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So Christ purged our conscience from dead works. What was the dead works? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2. For then would mm. they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers mm. once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. Because if it was perfect, guess what? It was only going to be done once. That's why he's asking, he says, for then would they not have ceased to be offered? Otherwise, they were going to stop. They were going to stop if it was perfect. But it was not perfect. That's why it did not cease. It still continued. When? Every year. Once every year. It says, because that the worshippers once perished should have had no more conscience for sin if it was perfect. But it wasn't. That's why we had to do it year on year, year in and year out. Because our, our, pension, our conscience was not paid of dead work. It was still defiled. Okay, go back to Hebrews 9, verse 15, one, once again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God? Purge your conscience from mm. dead works to serve the living God. Read. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death, mm. for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called mm. might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now, this is some heavy stuff. He says, because, because of this, that's why he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death, meaning his death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament for the, of the people, not for himself, because he was what? He, was, he offered himself without support to God, because he did not sin. They which shall call might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. This promise right here is the promise that was given to our forefather Abraham. Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book. Hold on. You know what? Jump down. Hmm. Read verse 24. Jump down to verse 24. Watch this. Verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the mm. figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. You see that thing right there? Now this is heavy right there. This is the, the point of the day of atonement. Read verse 24 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, mm. now to appear in the presence of God for us. So now what we're reading is that Christ is not entered, Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands. The one that was made with hands was the tabernacle that we built. You understand when we're in the wilderness? You understand? The temple that we built when Solomon was the king, that was made with hands. The one that was built during the time of when Nehemiah had to return back uh, from Persia to Jerusalem, you understand, to rebuild the walls after the Rubabel came to build the temple and to rebuild it. That was built with hands. This one right here was not built with hands. Read it again, verse 24. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 24. 
For Christ is mm -hmm. not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, mm. now to appear in the presence of God for us. So now Christ entered into what he entered in, not into the holy place made with hands, but what which are the figures of the truth. The two tabernacles that are there, where the most high God is. There's the two tabernacles that are there where the heavenly father is, in the third heaven. You understand? So the way Moses, when Moses was commanded how to tell us how to deal it, the Lord says, like, maybe make it according to how it is made up today. Let me get that. Get that in Exodus, real quick. Mm. This low shitting is of the devil. This low shitting is of the devil. Okay. Um, Exodus 25, actually. Exodus 25, read verse 31. Now, this is the menorah. Okay, Mo the Lord is giving Moses how the menorah must look like. Now read that, Exodus 25, verse 31. The book of Exodus, chapter 25, verse 31. And thou shalt make mm -hmm. a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bows, his knobs and his flowers shall be of the same. It shall be of the same. So he's explaining to him how he must you know, put together the minor. Okay? Now jump down to verse 40 now. Verse 40. And look that the, the book of Exodus chapter 25 verse 40. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. Mm -hmm. So he says, make sure that you make them after their pattern, according to what I've showed you in the mount. The pattern, the patterns of what? The ones in the heaven. So that's what the Apostle Paul was saying here. Heavy stuff. Go back to Hebrews 9, verse 24 again. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God mm. for us. So now Christ entered into heaven itself, where the Lord is, where the mother God is. He says to do what? Now to appear. What verse you at? Mm, yes, verse 24. It says what? But into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. So guess what? On the day of atonement, because now Christ entered into the tabernacle that was not made with the hand, to appear in the presence of God for us, guess what Christ is doing today? Right now, as we're going over this, this was going on. Give me that in first job. This is what is taking place right now in the heaven where the most has got it. First John chapter 2 verse 1. Watch this. Hmm. Heavy stuff, First man. John, chapter 2, verse 1. My little really? children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, mm -hmm. we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. You see that? We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So what is Christ doing right now? He's advocating for us. Right now on this day, he is advocating for us as the Lord will put us to death. He is advocating for us that the Lord, you know what, the Lord has give us, uh, give us a clean slate. You understand? For all, to clean us, to give us a clean slate for all the sins that we committed this year. That's what's going on right now in the heaven. You understand? Court is in session. Understand that. This is some heavy stuff, brothers and sisters. See that again, this one, man. Mm. This is some beautiful stuff, man. Read again, this one. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, Ray? these things are I unto you, mm. which is sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We have an advocate with, with the Father. Because Christ is up there with the Father, advocating for us. Go ahead. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for mm. ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Meaning all 12 tribes of Israel. Go back to Hebrews 9, read verse 25 now. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 25. Know uh -huh. yet that he should offer himself often, as thy priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. You see that with blood of others because he had to do it for himself and for the people. So Christ didn't have to do that because he was that lamb without spot. Right? For then 
must he often have suffered since the foundations of the world. But now, mm. once in the end of the world, he hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now that's some heavy stuff. He says he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So he listen, the priests used to do it every year, every year, including their sons that came after them, their sons, sons, and their, you know, the grandkids. They all had to do that because they were the lineage and the sons of Aaron. Christ only did it one time. One time he entered in once and said, Okay, I got this. Big brother. Big brother coming to the rescue. He says, Don't worry, brothers, I got this. And he helped us. He only went in once. So we don't have to go through this thing over and over like that. He only went in once. You understand? He, he says he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hmm. Go ahead. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Okay, that's something different. Go ahead. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Mm. And unto them that look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Heavy stuff. When he resurrected and when, he, when he's coming to return, the second comes. The apostle Paul is going into that now. But what I'm showing you is what the high priest used to do, which needed to be done once every year, guess what? Christ only went in once. You understand? So, it has, it does, so we don't have to do that every year. But guess what? Guess what we do now? We still observe the day of atonement. Christ now is advocating for us. No longer the high priest, which is where the sons of Aaron. Christ is the real original high priest. He's the one that is standing in place for us. He's advocating for us with the Father right now. Court is in session. The books are open. You understand? You say, mm, that one, that one that cleaned the slate. You understand? Watch this. Now, this is what we do now. Give me that in Romans. Okay, my battery is going to drop dead. Okay? So, you know, I just want to squeeze this little bit of it. Um, Hebrews. No, no, Romans. Romans chapter 3. Um, read verse, verse 20 and 21. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 20. Mm -hmm. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Do you see that? By the, law is the, by the law is the knowledge of sin. What law? The law of animal sacrifice. Reminded us that we are still in the midst of sin because it could not make us perfect. Next verse. Go ahead. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest. Mm -hmm. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. You see that, but now the righteousness of God without the law. Who's the righteousness of God? Christ. Without the law, because he came to do away with the law of animal sacrifice. You understand? It says, be witnessed by the law and the prophets, because it was prophesied by Moses. It was prophesied by the prophets that came after him. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Nahum, Nehemiah, so on and so forth. Go ahead. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there mm. is no difference. Because now we are under the new covenant. But the Apostle Paul is saying something else there. Now watch this. What I'm showing you is now we keep the righteousness of the law. We still keep the, the day of atonement. We still observe it. We, the only thing we don't do is offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Because Christ did that. No longer now, the sons of Aaron, they are advocating for us. But Christ, the high priest with the Father in the heavens, is advocating for us that the most High God wipe the slate clean. You understand? So that all the sins that we committed through this year, they may all be forgiven. Psalm chapter 51 verse 1, I'm squeezing the 3% I've got left. Come on, come on, come on. The book of Psalm chapter 51 verse 1. Go ahead. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, Blot out my transgressions. You see, that's what we're asking the Lord to do for us. To blot out our transgressions. Go, go ahead. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse mm -hmm. me from my sin. That's what we want the Lord to do. We're asking the Lord to beg in the most High to do this for us. Wash me thoroughly, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Come on. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my mm -hmm. sin is ever before me. 
We must acknowledge the sins that we committed against the Most High God. Read. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, mm -hmm. and done this evil in thy sight, that thou Read. mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Jump down to verse 16 and 17 now. Come on. Verse, verse 10, verse 10, verse 10. Verse 10, I'm sorry, verse 10. Come on. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, mm -hmm. and renew a right spirit within me. That's what we're asking the Lord to do. Come on. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. We don't, we're asking the Lord not to take thy, his Holy Spirit from us, but his Holy Spirit dwell within us as the Lord forgives us our sins, that we sin no more. Okay? Let the worst thing come upon us. Go ahead. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Come on. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners mm -hmm. shall be converted unto thee. Because we're going to teach the people the laws of God for them to repent. Next verse. Come on. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, mm -hmm. thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Jump down to verse 16, come on. Verse 16, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest Ring. not in burnt offering. Mm -hmm. Come on. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a Ring. contrite heart, O God. Thou will not despise. So that's what the Lord is looking for. The Lord is looking for what? A broken spirit. Meaning what? We must acknowledge our offenses. We must show the Lord that we are sorry for what we've done. By changing our ways and keeping his commandments. You see that when he says in a contrite heart, oh God, thou will not despise. The Lord says I'm not going to despise it if you come to me sincere. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, all praises to the Lord. All praises, sir. All praises. Oh, praise to the Lord.